This is Keith Trim again with Keith Trim Dragon Art. And once again, I'm with my fan club president and wife, Cheryl Trim. And we're, and we're going to talk about tattoos again because I'm going to get into the tattoo crowd somehow. Uh, uh, well, I've got you here. Make sure you subscribe. I need lots of subscribers. So, Cheryl, tell me about tattoos. Well, what do you want to know? Tell me what it feels like to have somebody stab you in the arm. <laughs> well, it depends on where you get it done, I think. For me personally, um, the only one that the only ones that really hurt were the ones on top of my foot where the skin's really thin, you don't have a lot of fat, you know. But, like, the ones on my arm and my wrists, um, those didn't really hurt. Was it worth the pain? Yeah. What do you get out of tattoos? See, I don't have any tattoos. You yeah, know. you said that, which, I, it's unfortunate that you don't. So I have artwork I've done in the past. People have asked me to draw pictures, and I've done that. And somewhere running, running around this world, people have my artworks on their back, I guess. It's not me. Yeah. Uh, I'll just I'll say this. I always find it kind of weird that something I drew is going to exist on somebody's body. And for some weird reason, I have a problem with that. I don't know why. So I guess I'll never be a tattoo artist. But I wouldn't mind, I guess, I don't know. You know, for example, this, this painting that we're watching right now, this, I think, would make a really good tattoo, like, you know, um, the shoulder cap type of tattoo, because it kind of has a rounded head and it would fit there really well. The colors are amazing and the details are cool. So you'd have to have the right tattoo artist to do that on you. Uh, because not, I mean, just like everything else, not all tattoo artists are created the same. Speaking about this painting, I tried something different here. Um, this is watercolor paper. So you saw me putting just plain water on there. And then I added the color afterwards so it blend. I, I was just trying something different. I'm always trying to make my videos look different from the other ones. So did that experiment work then? I think it looks like a like really cool blue sky, and it has some purple highlights, which is nice. I don't like to use purple a lot because it's kind of an oddball color. But um, So now I'm going back and I'm filling in. Oh, another thing. I, one goal I had for this painting was I wanted to mix colors, which sounds kind of funny. But I tend to use colors right out of the bottle or a tube and I just kind of lighten them up and darken them down but I was watching a YouTube video recently where I was watching somebody mix colors and I thought well, I'm missing out on a huge opportunity here you know I've been doing art since I was five years old and I'm now really super old so it's been a long time you think I'd mix colors more but on this one I made a, uh, a goal to mix as many as I could so it would look different than my other paintings but um, this I think it's an eagle I don't think it's a falcon um, I found this picture online, and I, I broke a rule of art. Um, normally, I draw my pictures from my uh, references, and I blow them up. This one, I just blew it up from the original picture, and you can throw me in art jail if you want to. I don't care. It got it up faster, and, and the proportions are correct, and I get to do the fun thing, which is go in there, mix colors, and fill it in. Um, one of my goals for this painting also was to do... Uh, gold, gold leaf, which I, I failed miserably on, but, well, not miserably, I had to paint over it. Anyway, um, back to tattoos. Yeah. Um, so they they hurt. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, no, it's not, I don't think it's a, a, like a terrible pain, but of course it depends on your, your pain tolerance. It's like getting maybe scratched by a cat. So when Itch. you, or when you see other tattoo people, do you like give high fives and stuff? No, that's weird. <laughs> you have like a tattoo club on the street. You go, hey, no. hey, dude, I, I like your tattoo. No, not unless I. You remember? Okay, do you remember that guy that we saw in Florida a couple of years ago on the pier that had those really cool Star Wars tattoos on his legs? I do. We stopped and talked to him, and but we stopped and talked to him because they were very well done tattoos, and it Star Wars is something that we both like. Which is funny because when I was painting this picture. When I, went, when I was taking my breaks, I was actually watching Star Wars. That's kind of funny. You bring that up. But Star Wars is for Sunday nights. Yeah, I'll have to watch it twice. <laughs> so, uh, go up to this guy. What about him again? Well, he, the guy the guy in Florida? He had Star Wars on his legs. Yeah, he had... Yeah, and it was like old school Star Wars. It wasn't oh, the new stuff. That brings me up to a topic. Uh, tattoo artists. Um, if I was going to get a tattoo, I would have to vet that person completely. I'm not going to have some... I don't know, some bozo put scratch <laughs> art on me. I mean, if I had a tattoo, it would be my own artwork. I, I already just, just decided that. I'm not going to go to a tattoo shop 
go up to a wall and look at some random pictures and go, I want this uh, star and this moon on my chest. No. The no. majority of my tattoos have been done by one guy, Eddie Good Teacher, and even the ones that were not done by him, I've had him add to. So I, I, he's, he would be my go-to guy. But he's, I don't even think he's in the state right now. I just don't know where I would go. I mean, you have to do like research on these people, you know? Yeah. Like, how good are you? I mean, because a, a lot of my artwork, if, you, if you're watching my videos, is pretty detailed. And I don't know if you could tattoo some of this stuff. You know, I, I guess I just You'd have to, to have the right artist. You're right. And, and there's a billion tattoo artists nowadays. I mean, tattooing has exploded. I remember back when I was in art school, um, somebody t told me I should be a tattooist or tattooer. What's the word? Yeah. Uh, tattooing. And ba back in those days, I was like, no, I don't want to be. A t I don't want to do that. That's for sailors and drug addicts, so, you know. But that's changed. That's changed. If you're watching yeah, this video, nice. I'm sure you're not a drug addict. Hopefully. Nice. Right. I mean, I, Keith has this thing where he says tattoos are fads and that kind of thing, and. Which is really weird since he's married to somebody who has nine of them. But uh, honestly, tattoos are not fads. I mean, there there is archaeological evidence of people with tattoos from thousands of years ago. Mummies from the Siberian tundra that have tattoos. And so obviously it's not a fad. Now, heavy metal music is a fad. And I'm a musician. If you watch my videos, I put a lot of my own songs on my own videos. Uh, doing this voiceover stuff is kind of new for me. I have to make my wife help me because I can't just sit here for eight minutes and just ramble about it. It would be so boring for anybody listening anyway. It, it would be. So we, let's look at the painting here. What am I doing? Uh, looks like I am adding... Oh, this is the part where I was trying to do the metal, uh, the gold. And I study gold. I mean, I look at it, I pictures of it, and this one did not work. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. It's not how I wanted it. So eventually, when I come here and do my... Um, uh, Shading, shading. Um, I shade over it, the whole thing, and I knock it back, and I read, I redo parts of it because this is just too much yellow. It just takes away from the picture. Uh, I'm doing some highlights, on, highlights on the beak. Uh, I changed the color from the original reference. The reference was more of a white. I thought I liked the, the green. Uh, I think I mixed it from two other colors. Oh, one of the things that uh, I notice in the pictures that people like is repetitive things and patterns. I so, think just naturally people, your eye is drawn to repetitive patterns, so, just in general. So in this picture, I intentionally put a lot of repetitive patterns. So if you didn't like the picture, it might you know, put you into a trance or something, and then you'd have to stare at it. Okay, now I'm putting in my shading, which I never do at the end, which is so weird. I always do my shading before this. I don't know. I, I must have been wacky or something. Um, you see that? I just wiped off a drip. I'm, like, I, I'm doing washes right now. And a lot of times when I have washes, my brushes is loaded up too much water and just drips down the thing. So I have a, a napkin or paper towel ready to wipe it off the canvas. So here I am adding some more mixed colors just to you know change things up here on the beak. Uh, putting some highlights on this thing. I don't know what it is exactly. Uh, it wraps around his neck. His cowling. Cowling. Airplanes have cowling. Now he does. So here I go. I'm putting minimal highlights over the same gold uh, so it's not so overpowering. Hey, this is Keith from Keith Trim Dragon Art. I'm here with my wife, Cheryl, and we've been watching a lot of tattoo shows on YouTube. And Cheryl has lots of tattoos. And I think my work fits into the tattoo category, even though I don't do tattoos. But uh, tell me about tattoos, Cheryl. Well, I have nine. And, um, I don't know. I think they're kind of addicting. Like once you get one, you want to get another one and another one and another one, depending on what it is, of course. But I would think that my stuff would fit in that category, but you know, I share my stuff with the tattoo community and I get like nothing. I don't know. It's kind of, kind of bumps me out a little bit, but on the screen here, I'm, uh, inking in my shark. Um, it's kind of a cartoony looking shark. I've done a lot of these in my life ever since jaws came out i think i drew my first shark um so this is the inking process right here and watching on the um tattoo shows it's interesting to see how these guys can get this kind of effect with this tiny little needle and i'm using this big old inch and a half brush and right now i'm putting in my background um i made my ocean blue green instead of blue i don't know i'm just kind of using different colors just to, for the fun of it and i'm using this watercolor paper 
Um, here I'm putting in my, my background, which is kind of a mountain seascape. It's a lot darker on screen now, but it dries lighter, lighter and it's like you just see right there, it's much lighter. And right now I'm putting in the top of the shark. So I had to go to Google and look up sharks and see how they're colored. They're darker on top and they're lighter on bottom, which makes total sense because you're looking down at a shark that kind of matches the ground. If you're looking up at a shark, it kind of matches the sky. So um, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm doing. So next, um, tell me about some of your tattoos. Well, um, I have I have a compass with kind of some watercolor dogwood flowers around it that says not all who wander are lost, which is a quote from, not all those who wander are lost, which is a quote from Tolkien, from Lord of the Rings. Um, I have a camera body on my arm with a bunch of other wildflowers and kind of the, the watercolor style as well. We got to talk about that real quick. Is yeah. uh, Who did that? Eddie Good Teacher. Okay. Um, Eddie Good Teacher. And one thing he did, and Cheryl was discussing this, was he freehanded it, which I think he did. Yeah. But he freehanded it onto paper, not onto her skin. And Although I do have a tattoo that Eddie did on my foot that he did freehand onto my skin. And it's a, like a stargazer lily with some other, see I have a theme, flowers. Um, but he did freehand the one on my foot the thing, onto my skin. The thing about freehanding just, just kind of kills me. Growing up as an artist, it's like a badge of honor if you can freehand something. And the older I get, the more I think that's just bogus because... I freehand a lot, most of my stuff, but there's times I will use a reference photo and I'll just use, trace it right off the screen. And it, it doesn't bother me that I do that because, um, to me, the painting part is the main part. You know, if, if you, if you can get your image on the canvas easier, who cares? I mean, nobody's going to give me an award for freehanding anything. <laughs> well, the thing about guys like artists like you and Eddie are that, is that you actually draw you know, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of tattoo artists out there who are using iPads and, you know, computer rendered kind of stuff to do their designs, which I guess is, you know, I mean, that's fine. But I think the old school stuff has a different feel to it. Which is funny because drawing is something I've always done, but I have to force myself to sit down and draw. I don't draw for fun, which is funny. I just don't. Um, I paint for fun. I enjoy the painting process. But to sit there and just, you know, make myself look at the screen, look at the image and just scratch it out. It, it's, it's, I won't say it's painful, but it's, it's not as enjoyable. Um, you know, I, I like, you know, oh, my, here's my shark. I'm putting in the teeth. And next thing I do is put in my uh, shading. Shading. It's a big deal. Oh, my gosh. And Tattoo World shading is huge. It's so funny to me to listen to these guys talk about shading like, like it's a big deal. I shade in my sleep. You know, it's something I've, I've always done. It, it comes to me very naturally. Well, it is a big deal because if it if you don't shade, it looks flat. It it doesn't look... I mean, it, it increases the... The... Um, the, the depth. Yeah. And it makes it look better when you're actually shading. If I The camera that I have on my arm, if there was no shading in that, it would look stupid. But it makes me feel like I'm in eighth grade again. You know, all these adults shading oh he did it in freehand and he shaded well so what you do that when you're a kid i, I, I don't know yeah, but I, not everybody not everybody has that artist perspective i mean i think it's important to understand that not everybody has the same talents and maybe they don't understand shading or no, maybe they, they can't do it it's just the way they talk they, they, they talk like we're in, in junior high. Anyway, so here I am putting on my first layer of highlights. And my highlights always come in, in uh, row, not rows. Uh, I'll, I'll start with my darker highlights, my medium layers, highlights. Layers, you do them in layers. Layers. That was a gradients. It's gradients or something. Um, so here I am. I'm adding my highlights to my shadows. Without the shadows, your highlights don't work. Um, I'm surprised I didn't mention that in the tattooing. But the thing about tattooing is you they use white ink. I don't think white ink lasts, does it? I have a daisy tattoo that was done in white ink that um, does not show up as white anymore. I, I don't know what the process is. They, they kind of use skin color as their whites. And your skin color is kind of, uh, I don't know, about a six on a scale of one to ten for brightness or value. It's hard, I think, to get a good uh, light value in a tattoo. 
And right now my cat is attacking my paintings. Um, stop that. Hey, hey. Um, so what are we doing here? We're, oh, I added some blue. Uh, I backfilled my gray uh, shadows with blue because blue is a very good shadow color. So I'm doing that right now. Putting my blues in. Uh, adds another sense of dimension to it. Um, so tell me about some more of your tattoos. Um... I have my mom's writing on my wrist. It says, love mom. That's probably my favorite one, even though it's like the most simple. Oh, okay. In this picture, I had to do um, some boat wrecks. So I just kind of just doodled these in. I wasn't making a big deal out of it. I did Google some, some boat wrecks, but I wasn't making a big, huge deal. So they're kind of just there in the bottom just to take up some space. Oh, okay. Here's my submersible. Now, we're, we're being timely with this painting because just recently that submersible uh, imploded. imploded. So I thought I would put a submersible in my painting. And it's a super, super simple one. They're easy to do. Um, it's just basically a circle, some light, hi highlights, and whatnot. Oh, my shark is evil, so he has to have a red eye. Uh, eyes are tricky, but there's a certain way I do them to give them highlight, shadow, and then you put that all-important um, eye shine right here. Give me two seconds, I'll throw it in. Uh, there it is. That's the eye shine. That brings it to life. Without that, your painting sucks. So, I'm painting on watercolor paper, which is different than gesso. It has a different feel to it. It dries much faster, but I'm getting used to it. And I like it because it's basically cheap. Um, but coming up here, I have to put some tape on this thing. I was afraid the tape was going to pull paint off the watercolor uh, here it is. I'm putting tape on, but it didn't. I just didn't press it on too hard. Um, put a little bit of a shine from the lights here. Uh, sign my name to my painting. Don't don't click off yet. Make sure you like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And I need many more followers. I need a thousand followers and four thousand hours of watch time. So stick with me and share this with your friends. We're getting down to the end here. This is the final painting. It's a work of art. It belongs in a museum somewhere. I'll sell to you for $5,000, and thanks for watching. <laughs>